Hello, welcome. Good evening from Eurogench TV. I am Aishan Jamal and this is the latest printed press. Tonight our topic is how to be socially magnetic. Um, I know a lot of you might know what that means, but basically it's about being that it's person, the person is stopped um, by everyone for directions, the person that everyone gravitates to, to a party. And of course, more importantly, it's linked to business and how you can be successful and connect uh, with other business people and um, have meaningful relationships and, you know, uh, liaise with brilliant business minds. And tonight we're really, really fortunate to um, have us discuss this topic. Um, ben Chai, the Doctor Who of business, is with us tonight. And hello, there you are. <laughs> Welcome, Ben. How are you tonight? Yeah. Ben, we've lost your sound. We can't actually hear you at the minute. Sorry guys, we're just trying to reconnect. This is the problem with modern technology, but we'll be connecting with you. I want to be able to hear him. But Ben is actually, we're very fortunate. I mean, um, we're gonna actually have Ben come on in uh, November as well and actually be in the studio. Um, but he is um, an expert on um, business and how to be socially magnetic and has written lots of books as well about this topic so once we are able to reconnect with him we will do hopefully that will happen in a few minutes but like i said what is socially being magnetic all about it's basically all about uh, building those meaningful relationships and um, connecting with people and obviously within the world of business this is very very important um, and that's what we're going to be discussing tonight um, there are lots of sort of motivational speakers out there and inspirational individuals but what's unique about Ben is that he actually gives you very hands-on um, tips as to how to be socially magnetic and to actually build your confidence so hopefully we'll be able to reconnect with him any moment now um, he's written lots of books as well about this um, issue so I would recommend that you read those but in the meantime, what is being socially magnetic? It's not just about you know, being the most popular person. It's not just about, you know, like I said, being the person that everybody asks directions to. It's actually building up that confidence and being able to um, socially get somewhere, especially in the world of business. And um, that's what we're gonna be discussing tonight. It seems to be very much at the forefront of a lot of topics and issues at the moment, um, linked to lots of things like uh, growth mindset um, that is linked to schools. And we are trying to encourage this within our local community. So it's not just about people in business, but it's also a message to people in education as well. And I think, are we ready to reconnect? Okay, Ben, I think the studio is trying to call you at the minute. If we can reconnect. <laughs> this is the problem when we're live. These things happen, but it's fine. It's all good. I'll carry on uh, telling you about what this whole idea is. Um, so like I said, it's about uh, building up relationships within business. And, you know, the latest trend at the moment is to go to a lot of different places and to network and to network with different businesses. There's a lot of networking groups out there, um, networking events. Um, but it's all well and good to be able to go to these things, but it's about how you can actually project yourself and be successful within those environments. And hopefully Ben will be able to give us some tips about that. Um, and we're going to be asking, oh, we're back, yay! Ben, come Yay! <laughs> I don't know. 
Hello, Hello Ben. Ben, welcome. Right, uh, let me just formally introduce you again. Ben Chai, the Doctor Who of business, talking about how to be socially magnetic. Now, I've tried to sort of summarise to our audience while we couldn't connect to you there about what it is to be um, socially magnetic. But before we go into that, delve into that, would you be able to tell us a little bit about yourself and your um, background? Yes, I wasn't an amazing person when I was small, and I'm an amazing person now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And, and um, are you like, I mean, people. if you could tell us a little bit about, you're, you're quite, a, you're very humble, but you're quite a successful business person, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, 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 I'm one of those sick people who, who's kind of like a rags to riches kind of guy. Mm. Um, so I guess my parents were middle class, but, but when I graduated university, I slept on the floor of, um, yeah, just with six other people. I ate porridge for lunch and cornflakes for dinner. And I really needed to work out how to get out of my, my rubbish if I, if I wanted to have a different kind of life. Right, so you educated yourself, basically. That was the first I, step. I did. I, I did lots of education, uh, mm. tons and tons of that. I, I used to work till three, four in the morning, yeah. just reading and educating myself with these kind of like, we had in those days where they were called laser discs. Uh, if I had my life over again with the internet, I would be kind of um, educating myself with a lot of the, the free educational components on the internet. Yes, I know. This is the thing, isn't it? In the last 20 years, I think um, what youngsters don't realise is it's really sort of gone ahead, hasn't it? And everything is at your fingertips. But I remember as well scrolling through things. But knowledge is power, certainly. And I think that is a key to um, forwarding yourself. Right. How did you acquire your title? I think everyone's wondering. The Doctor Who of Business. That's such an amazing Doctor title. Who Tell us a bit about that. I know, well, you see, because I always wanted to be an actor. In fact, it's one of the last things that I was told I would never be able to do. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking at doing these days. And okay. uh, in terms of business, I, I used to come up with solutions to impossible problems, which is what Doctor Who does. Uh, Doctor Who is a, a UK-based sci-fi program about this very eccentric guy, so people think I'm eccentric as well, uh, who, who everyone thinks he's totally scatty and, and not really all there, but suddenly out of the blue, he'll come out with a solution to impossible challenges. Yes, that's the best So that's how I got the thing. title, the doctor who of business, um, just looking at, like, for example, I, if I was working with you, Aishan, I'd be thinking about all the ways if, if you wanted to hit a certain financial figure, all the ways that you could do it, and then I would work out a plan for you. Okay, that's fantastic. I think I do need to utilize you then for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if we move to our sort of main topic then, so obviously that's your background. Uh, you're quite an astute business person. And like you said, um, you sort of built yourself up through education and bettering yourself. But this social magnetism, how to be socially magnetic, I mean, I've watched you on TED Talk and you've had some truly inspirational talks there. Can you tell us a little bit about that idea about being socially magnetic? What is that all about? Oh, yes, absolutely. So I've spent a lot of time working with entrepreneurs and yeah. for some reason I, I, I keep getting adopted by these women's groups. Uh, uh, a, a recent one was the wage, uh, multicultural women, uh, women's group, uh, and uh, where I was uh, asked to be a brand ambassador for them. Now, having spent all this time in entrepreneurial networks and in the ladies' groups, I, I noticed a common trend, and this trend was that with the entrepreneurial networks, people who had a new business, a new startup, they would come up to you and say, hey, listen, I've got uh, 10 fantastic crypto microphones. Would you like to buy one? Before they even got to know you. 
Mm. So before they even connected and had some kind of deep connection with you. But the ladies groups, I found that a lot, a lot of ladies are very giving people. They're really wonderful people to be working with. Yeah. But they would undervalue themselves and many of them had been in abusive relationships. Mm. So, so the whole social magnetism came out of my seeing what was going on in the business world and also with the various uh, women's groups that I was working in. Um, one of the, the honors I had was launching a button, uh, which is a, an app for a phone, and any, any woman being abused can hit this or, or call up this, this app and it would give them kind of a and just just to be able to look at their situation and see what they can do, whether whether it's wise to call the police or not. And this is a this is an app launched in South Africa. It's not launched in every other country. And in in South Africa, there's I didn't know this, but 92 percent of women are abused um, either through domestic violence or emotional um, or intellectual kind of a, abuse. Uh, and, and these are statistics that are in the World Economic Forum. So yeah. I don't know whether it's worse, but these are only reported incidents. Mm. It's just a so the social whole social magnetism is, is mm. how how can I help these people? And that's where the talk came from. Yes. And then with the talk, you can only do about 15 minutes in, in the TED talk. But we also have a book that would give people, you know, uh, information which doesn't cost them so much on how to get really great, wonderful people in their life. Mm. Well, this is the thing, this is what I like about um, your talks, is the fact that you actually do give people hands-on information. We spoke about this before the live feed, that um, that's what I think is unique about you. I mean, you can go to a lot of these sort of talks, inspirational talks, motivational speakers, and you can feel good for that that moment but what do you take away with you and I think actually you give quite clear cut things I mean thinking about the TED talk you talk about three things that you can do I don't know if you could sort of talk about that a little bit with us three, sure, tips, three sure, main yeah, things and I, I found I, that very inspirational I'd quite like you to share that with our viewers tonight sure so the first the first tip is to really love yourself and understand that you are just a wonderful person that you're an amazing person and i'm not talking about this in a kind of a narcissistic perspective it's just accepting that you like anybody else in this planet are valuable and unique and and you're just really amazing in the talk i gave a few tips on how to which many people are unable to do so some try and do it through self-affirmation, which I, I don't think is really helpful because, because if you tell yourself over and over, hey, I'm lovable and I'm wonderful, but deep down you think, oh, no, I hate myself, yeah. it, you, you cause a, a disconnect and a tension in your body. Mm. So, so over time, I, I talk to people about the, it's not It's not my technique. It's something that I learned from somebody else. But the, the mirror technique, where over time you look at yourself in the mirror, and, and you you have these chats with yourself. Mm. So, so that's one way of developing self-value. Yeah. So the looking second, inside a mirror and directly speaking to yourself. Yes, absolutely. A bit like me trying to look inside my camera at the moment <laughs> <laughs> to to position myself for your camera. Yeah. Um, so 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 that that that's the, the first thing. The second thing is to give value to other people. Mm. Now, this is very interesting because say you are a road sweeper, for example, and you don't think you have much value or, or some kind of like um, maybe a receptionist or a waiter and you think, well, you know, I'm a waiter. What, what value can I give to anybody? There's a very rich person, or there's a very famous person. How can I add value to them? So I go a bit deeper than just talking about knowledge value, but how you can make other people's lives just a little bit easier just by being you, the wonderful you that you are. 
And, uh, you know, what, one tip is just to take a selfie with someone and then write it up and say, say some nice things about the person you've just met. Mm. You, you can only really give great value to other people if you understand how to, if you understand who you are and can, can add value to yourself. So there's, there's a, a great phrase, I think, in the spiritual world, to, to love others as you love yourself. The challenge people have is that they don't love people as they love themselves. So, so, so for example, in the women's group world, the women give more value to other people at the expense of themselves and then end up being uh, abused. Because people say, oh, you know, that lady, she's doing all of this great stuff for me. Mm. Uh, I, I'm not going to necessarily do anything back for them or I'm going to take them for granted. And then obviously that causes, it, that causes issues with, with them. And if they understood that someone was now taking them for granted and abusing themselves, um, mm. abusing them, they would stand up for themselves and say, no, I'm a person of value. I don't deserve this kind of behavior being uh, going against me. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. I, I remember you saying, you know, avoiding the crocodiles. I quite like that sort of analogy, that's to be honest fair. with you. That's yeah, I do. Well, that's or the toxic, I think they say the, the energy suckers. I mean, I think we all can relate the, to the that. The psycho vampires. The, the social psycho vampires. I mean, I've got a few as well. But um, that's the thing, the isn't it? Is you, yeah, but it's not easy because nine times out of ten, like you actually say in your talk, it's not somebody that you dislike. It's normally somebody that you actually really, really love and you're very close to. Or, or a close family member, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, the, that's you know, identifying the fact that you can still love them, but you need to love yourself as well. And it's not selfish to love yourself, that you need to give yourself that value. Because how can you be of use to anybody? Um, if you don't love yourself, but it's it's hard, isn't it? It is hard, and certainly I think all the groups that you've been involved with, um, you know, it's all well and good to say to someone, feel good, feel good. But like you said, if you're feeling mm. down inside, you can say it as many times as you want, but it's not going to that disconnect uh, will make it very difficult to move. But having those tips, like looking at yourself in the mirror. And accepting, and I think what I liked about your speech was not just looking at yourself in the mirror, but actually accepting who you really are with the faults. If you're overweight, underweight, you've got a spot, your hair's not right, just accepting the fact that we are beautiful. Yeah, and me <laughs> tonight. <laughs> just accepting who you are. I think it does come through age. I feel personally, as I get older, you, you almost give up, don't you? You just think, well, I am what I am, and that's it. You get too tired. <laughs> but certainly when you're young, no, you're you've absolutely... got that energy. And with the social media today, I mean, I don't know what you think about that, but I do feel like there is so much more pressure to be a certain way. I mean, what would you say to somebody young who sort of is on social media? I mean, what would you say to them? Would you give them any tips, particularly of how to use social media because you use it very well you use it to your advantage like i said you picked up on it looking at yourself taking the selfie what would your advice be <laughs> well so i i think you hit on it uh, just now the, the older you get the less you care what other people think mm. and and the more you start valuing your time uh, with with people so if they don't appreciate it you just vanish but actually you know kids are the same uh, until they get shut down a lot. They, they really don't care. Oh, look, it's raining. I'm going to go outside and play football. Yeah, until, oh, no, you can't do that. You'll get a cold. Or, or that's stupid. Or, or, you know, other people, other kids, they, they, don't, they don't like football unless you, you kick other people. I don't know. <laughs> Just make it up. Yeah. Um, so when you're really young or the older you get, you, you care less and less. And look at us, we're doing this interview today and, and my, none of my tech works or the camera, I don't have brilliant clear kind of, exactly who cares because you're trying to get the information out yes. to people yeah. because it's important to help other, others. Uh, and so we don't actually care about what's going on around us, but we're thinking, yes, 
Perhaps we'll get some criticism, but so what? We're going to get criticism anyway for something else. Because I wore a bow tie, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it's having that uh, thinking outside the box um, and going with how you feel, really. If you feel like you should do something, you should do it. Like you said, it doesn't matter if it's raining. If you want to play football, play football. Um, and there's always, it's true, I mean, with social media, there's always somebody slightly better, someone slightly worse. You, you just got to adjust somehow. It's not just social media. Real life, there's always going to be better people than you and worse people than you. Mm. So, you know, and, and actually, this is why I have a great dislike for, for both positive thinking and negative thinking. You know, we talked about the black holes. And these tend to be people who complain a lot. And you're thinking, oh, my goodness, just get up and do something and stop moaning. And, and, and yeah. we, we might limit the amount of time we have um, yeah. with them because perhaps they're crocodiles so if you tell them what to do they'll just tell you what but also the the ultra positive people i think they're on they're on fantasy island <laughs> there's no reality in it you know a bit like you know the affirmations that we we just talked about saying i'm, I'm fantastic i'm brilliant i'm wonderful but deep down you don't feel that um, and perhaps you need to see a therapist. Mm. I think a lot of narcissists who, 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 who the I think they're amazing and everyone knows them are, are living, I, I think yeah. they need to see a therapist. Well, blaming everybody, so, so, everybody else for their problems, really. I think there are people yeah, like that, you know, who sort of bring you down. I think, you know, there is, like you said, there is a balance, finding that balance. You can't be too, too positive because then you do end up being in a dream world where you know, you're, you're never hitting reality, but at the same time, you can't always be a pessimist. Otherwise, you, you're not going to motivate yourself to get up and do anything. So it's finding that fine balance, really, and also finding people around you who have that fine balance also. If there is somebody who's constantly moaning at you, constantly asking you for advice, and not ever, you don't feel like you're hearing your own voice. I mean, even in a conversation, you can, you can sense that, really, I would say. If you're only hearing that person's voice and you're not hearing your own, there's something wrong there. I always find that sort of seems to be my gauge with um, those energy suckers. If I'm not hearing my voice at all within half an hour, then they're sucking my energy dry. But um, tell us about TED Talk. How did you manage to get involved in that? Because that's absolutely amazing. How did that come about? Oh, oh so there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways to get into do TED Talks if, if people are interested in doing TED Talks. Um, one is to just fill in the forms and apply yourself. Uh, another is to get a, a someone in PR to, to help you do that. And a third one is if you actually know some of the organizers of the TEDx talks and, and uh, you know, they, they know who you are and whether your talks are great, then obviously they'll be very pro you coming and speaking at their event. Uh, for, for me, I, I had a, a lovely PR person help me um, fill in the forms because I, I don't really have so much time these days and um, uh, was able to get got me on the panel for two TED Talks. That's amazing. What are your views currently on that? I think we need to... It's, it's on the huge. social magnetism um, TED Talk, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure why, but for the first year it had about three or 4,000 views. And in the last months it's, it's had over 120,000 views. Brilliant. So, so and, it, and it's still trending. I'll, I'll probably be you know, um, very pleased if it gets to a million, because that's... Yeah, uh, I think it will. Um, but I, I, because but the I thing think... is, people, when they start listening to it, they actually carry on and listen the whole way through. You're very, very, you know, it's very meaningful, like I said before. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I must mean, go I know you Cyprus. personally, I've had the pleasure of knowing you personally. I think you've always been a very positive person. But not like you said in Cloud Lala, you've actually been able to tell us about the reality, the fact that you weren't always this most popular guy, but you can get there. And it just takes a bit of perseverance, educating yourself, gaining a bit of knowledge, and then gaining the confidence to believe in yourself, really. I mean, what's the future? The future is that you're definitely coming on our program next November, hopefully, to be here in the hey. studio in person. That's definitely going to go in your calendar tonight, because <laughs> I know you're very busy. But what are your future plans? 
Oh, great. So, so currently, um, what I've been trying to do is, is deal with some, uh, some business challenges that have occurred due to uh, changes in the uh, UK law. Uh, once I've finished that, I'll probably start working on some of the online programs that I've got. Uh, as, as you've said, I, I, I get very, um, not distressed, but disgruntled with the offerings out there where, where people might say, hey, you've got to be more positive, but they don't tell you how. Yeah. Or they might d give you advice that sounds good, but it it's actually doesn't, doesn't work in and for example, many people I know who started out very positive and who were super positive are actually quite depressed these days and have a lot of regrets. Yeah. So, so I'm really into the, what we call transactional, uh, how-to kind of um, programs, which is my background with Microsoft and, and Learning Tree, where we would teach people about tech and business, but not hey, this is La La Land, but this is, this is the reality of business. This is the reality of tech. This is how you make it work for you. Uh, and so I'm, I'm looking at making more of those kinds of programs uh, online or if people want to come on courses, uh, to come on courses uh, with, with myself or, or, or other teams of people. Uh, but just trying to think, uh, you know, really I, I'm thinking having worked with people say in South Africa and so on. I, I'm really trying to think how I can go and do and educate people for free. Now by free, I, I don't mean that, that they can just come and sit there because I, I think if, if they, they sit there for nothing, and I've seen this with people I've helped yeah, before, and, uh, uh, and then someone, they just don't take enough action because there's not what we call enough skin in the game. So. So I'm, I'm looking at how I can build a platform to help people in deprived areas build their own economy. Mm. It, it may or may not work because sometimes they've already now developed a habit uh, and an understanding of themselves. Uh, take, for example, having self-worth. If you've been pushed down and told how useless you are for the last 10, 20 years, mm. it, it takes a lot of kind of energy to undo what, what society or what or, or, or culture has done to you. Mm. So I, I don't know whether I'll be able to do that, but, but if I can, uh, that, that is my long-term goal. And obviously, to, uh, we'll see how we go with that, that last journey of mine, but to, to see if I can become an A-lister in the acting world. Yeah, I'll be I'll be coming along with you with that one. <laughs> That'll be fantastic. It's been so wonderful, Ben, uh, speaking with you tonight. We've um, filled up our half an hour. It's flown by. Like I said, I will hold you to it, and we've got to get you back in the studio uh, talking about this in a little bit more detail. I think we need a little bit of a longer time, really. But thank you very much for joining us tonight on the latest printed press. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Ben. Thank you very much. And that's it from us from Eurogench TV. Good evening and good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.